Color contrast is super important for accessibility in all types of design. Although color contrast is especially helpful to those with low vision or color deficiency, it can also make a huge impact for everyone else too. Adding text to a complex background or an image can decrease the contrast and readability. Hey everyone, my name is Angela and I'm an accessibility designer and in today's video I'm going to be talking to you about color contrast. Now color contrast is super important for any design that someone is going to be creating and it's especially important to help with accessibility in design. Now in this video I'll be covering some tips about how you can start out with a good color contrast. I'll talk about some ways that we can try to improve some bad color contrast that's going on. Then we're going to cover the WCAG accessibility guidelines that already exist for web design and how that can be applied and used to help us with color contrast. And then lastly, I'm going to show you a tool that you can use to help you know whether or not your color contrast is passing those requirements. All right, so first we're going to talk about some tips of how to right off the bat get some good color contrast going on so that we're not having to crack things in the future when we realize that the color contrast might not be high enough. Initially, a good rule of thumb is looking at the lightness and darkness of the colors, if it's a tint, if it's a shade, if it's a mid-tone, and if you're pairing similar ones together, say you're pairing a lighter color with a lighter color, typically that's gonna mean that it is going to be lower contrast. Now, if you pair colors together that are lighter and darker, that's obviously going to be better for color contrast. Now, the absolute best color contrast that exists, it's been shown that is black background with a white foreground. And this totally makes sense because there's so many people providing dark mode for their phone applications or on their computers, they're putting things in dark mode. And it just makes it easier for some people to be able to see with that dark background with the high contrast of the white text. I prefer that myself. It's easier in my eyes. The starkness of a white background really makes it so bright that it makes it hard on my eyes. But when it's the darker background, it really makes the white pop. Now, if we pair mid-tones together, something that has similar color tone is going to make the color contrast lower. So one trick that I really think is super helpful and that designers should have in their pocket and use all the time is making their designs grayscale. Because once you make everything grayscale, you pull out all the color, then you can really see how legible it is without that color. And if two things are similar tone, then they might blend together when they're in grayscale. And then that helps you know that it might be difficult for some people to see and that the contrast is not quite high enough. I would also beware and pay attention when doing a monochromatic color scheme because if you have too many colors that are too close together in the same color, then it, that lowers your color contrast as well. Now, I'm not saying you can't use a monochromatic color scheme, but just keep that in mind and know that that could become an issue if you're not paying attention to that. All right, my next tip is to simply just be intentional about the color contrast of your color palette. So if you're working on a project and you're trying to decide what colors to use, play with the colors, figure out what the color contrast is and how you plan on pairing these colors together. What colors do you plan on using paired together? What colors will you use for the backgrounds, for what the text and the images and how will those all interplay with each other? Because if there's some colors you're using for some things and other colors that you're not using for those same things, then it could be okay that there's some colors that are a similar tone because they won't be interacting with each other as much. But if you're planning on interchangeably using all the colors, then you're going to want to make sure you find a way to have good color contrast with all the combinations that you plan on trying to use. And so for me personally, before I move forward with making a color palette official, I will pull those colors and those combinations into the checker I'll be sharing at the end of the video and see how they work together, see if they pass with each other. And then that way I will know for sure that those colors will work well with each other and I won't have to go back later and fix a ton of things because I did all the work up front instead of waiting until the end and react to things being not good color contrast. 
Another suggestion that I have is simply just trying a variety of colors. Maybe try making one a little darker or a little lighter so that it works better with each other. Just trying different color combinations and seeing which ones really work well and which ones are popping for you, which ones you can personally see better. And then my last tip is to put it in front of other people. Ask them if there's any color contrast issues for them. See if there's anything they didn't notice or just get their opinion so that you can test it with real people and see what they have to say about the color contrast. All right, so let's talk about a couple of different things you can do when you have a project that's already existing and you feel like you need to improve the color contrast so that it's more accessible. Now, the first suggestion I would give is to kind of do what I was just mentioning, where you just kind of play with the different colors and see if you can adjust the color scheme so that it works and all you would have to do is update your color swatches or figure out a way to switch out the colors and you just play with the background color, the foreground colors, how they're interacting with each other. Maybe you just need to swap out one or two colors to make it so that it has high color contrast. And now if we're talking about like text on a background, whether that's an image or just a plain background or a pattern or anything, there's a couple of effects that you could probably try to use. You could try adding a stroke, you could add a shadow to it, couple of things that you can do to just make it so that the text pops. You could even put like a color box behind it depending on the vibe you're going for in your design. But just use to your advantage the effects and different ways you could make it so that the text pops and that it's legible and easier for people to read without really having to tweak too much about the design. Now when it comes to the text, you can also do a couple of things with just the text instead of doing things with the color. For example, it's more legible the larger the size of the font is. When we look at the guidelines for WCAG, it's, if it's 18 point or higher, it becomes less of a problem when you're looking at the color contrast between the text and the background. So if you can increase the font size or if you can change the weight of the font that you're using, so you're using a font that's regular weight, then you could try using bold and maybe that will make it so that it's easier to read because it just makes it so it has more weight to it and it will make it easier for some people to read. Now, sometimes it's important to make sure you're paying attention. If it gets too bulky, like if it's extra black or extra bold, then that also decreases the legibility. So just playing around with the type itself, using a different font, using a different font size or shape, or even using you know, uppercase or lowercase, just playing around with the type itself can really help play into color contrast. Especially if you're set with specific colors or you're working for someone and they're like, we can't change the colors, then really finding a way to play with that text is going to help you. Now, when using patterns or images, it can become really tricky because images have so many different colors in them depending on how complex the image is. Some images have hundreds of colors in them, right? And it has no way of like, being super simple and so if we look at an image where there's a lot of different colors it's a very complex busy image then maybe we could look at a couple of different ways to fix this we could either crop the image in a different way so zoom it in or zoom it out so that we're intentionally placing the text in a less busy part of the image or with part of the image that has different areas that are just not as busy you could also apply some type of effect whether that's like making it lighter or shade or like making it black and white or finding another way to add some type of different texture or something to the image so that it lowers the busyness of the image and makes the text stand out more and making it so it even adds a little flavor to what you're doing. You really want to pay attention to the placement though, I would say, because if you have like an image with sky and it's like a solid sky background, that could be a good place to put your text. So basically, best rule of thumb, find the least busy parts, zoom it in, zoom it out, do what you need to, but don't just plop it on there and be intentional about it. That's my suggestion. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and share with you the 2.1 WCAG or Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. And these were specifically set as guidelines that need to be followed by law by people to make sure that they have met all the requirements. One of them is color contrast. And so we're gonna go over those specifically. But my point being is that these were set for web, but they don't have to only be used for web. I use these guidelines to help me when looking at all different realms 
of my designs because they're just a good rule of thumb even for print or anything like that i'll use these guidelines and typically that helps me have good color contrast overall all right so if we look at the wakehag website you can scroll through section by section of all the guidelines that need to be met along with a description for each section. There's also a table of contents on the left column so you can jump to a specific section if you'd like. So let's scroll down to section 1.4.3, contrast minimum, the section on color contrast. It reads, the visual presentation of text and images of text has a contrast ratio of at least 4.5 colon one except for the following. Large text, large scale text and images of large scale text has a contrast ratio of at least three colon one. So this is basically explaining what I said earlier, but if you have 18 point font or larger, then you don't have to have as such a large contrast ratio. The second exception is incidental. Text or images of text that are part of an inactive user interface component and that are pure decoration, that are not visible to anyone, or that are part of a picture that contains significant other visual content has no contrast requirement. So I think a simple way of thinking about this with a couple of other exceptions that can be included is anything that doesn't need alt text will fit into this category. And we also don't need to worry about color contrast for those images or text. The third exception says logo types. Text that is part of a logo or brand name has no contrast requirement. So this just shows that logos don't have to have color contrast. Obviously they can choose to make their logos have contrast, but it's not required. All right, so for me personally, I like to use Adobe Color to help me check my color contrast. There are multiple other ways that you can check your color contrast. Just Google it and you can find a lot of different checkers, but I'm gonna show you my favorite and let's go ahead and look at that. So we're gonna go to color.adobe.com. When we first enter the website, it will show their color wheel tool as the default, but we will be using the accessibility tools, which is the fourth tab at the top of the screen. When we first enter at the top, you will wanna make sure that the color contrast checker is selected. Then we will also want to select either AA or AAA WCAG 2.1 level, and you'll just pick the one that you wanna meet. AA is the minimum requirement, and AAA is even a higher standard. Most people go with AA, and so in this example, we'll stick with double A. Next to that, you can import colors from existing files that you might already have. Say it's a design you've already created and you wanna make sure that it meets the requirements. So that's a pretty cool feature that I need to play around with a little bit more later on. All right, so the main part of this tool is that you can type in your text color hex code for the background and the color hex code for the foreground or the text and it will auto-generate the contrast ratio for that combination of colors. And it shows a check mark for pass and a slash for fail. If we scroll down, it breaks it down into three different scenarios and whether they pass or fail. The first one is if the color combo passes contrast for text 17 point font or below. The second one is for 18 point font and above or if it's 14 point font that's bold and above. So making the text bold makes it so that you can have smaller text in some situations and it will still pass the requirements. And then the third scenario is for icons and actionable graphics. And then another cool feature in this tool is that it will give you suggestions in the right panel to make minor tweaks to increase the color contrast level. And that will help you get to where you need to be to make sure you're passing the levels that you need to pass. You can also specify what contrast level you want to meet to generate a color suggestion for you. And this just seems like such a handy way to ensure that you're meeting requirements while still using the colors that you want to use. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you wanna see more videos like this one, let me know in the comments below what you wanna learn more about. I hope that you all have a fantastic week and I will see you in the next one. Bye.